Welcome to Breakaway Sales with Mike Kerrison, where you will learn the secrets and strategies, actions and tactics of the best salespeople in the world to get the career you want and the life you deserve. Good morning, Breakaway Sales superstars. Mike here, Mike Kerrison here. Ah, another important day. I just got done working out. I'm feeling impulsive this morning. I guess many, many times I'm very impulsive. That's probably a strength and a weakness, but um, to me, action is usually followed by energy, by ideas about putting things in motion. Um, I get frustrated very quickly when someone overthinks a situation. Uh, not that you want to rush off and be careless. I'm not suggesting that for a minute, but I am a big believer that, hey, if the foundation feels solid, you don't have to have all the details worked out. You just move. So a lot of people ask me, how do I start my business day? And uh, quite frankly, it has ebbed and flowed um, over the years. But the one place that I frequently come back to is my energy, my mental outlook, um, and my ability to cope with the demands of the day. So like anything, I have to get myself ready. And I really highly suggest this for all of you, whether you're a small business owner running a business with all the wear and tear that goes with that, or if you're a salesperson that's out in the field and you're busting it every day in order to make a living and try to get to the next level and to get the kind of income and, and uh, uh, goodies for your family that you want. Sorry, I'm sweating. But uh, here's how I generally try to always start my day. Uh, one, I start right out of the gate with a cup of coffee. <laughs> Just one. I used to be a two-cupper, and then I would drink it all day. But I don't do that anymore because I don't think that's very good for me. Um, but I, I have my cup of coffee. Uh, I take about 15 minutes to really ponder the things that are big and looming that I, I know I've got to complete. Not the big, giant to-do list that sits there and doesn't get done. But what are the five to seven things that I know I have to do? So I kind of ponder those for 15, 20 minutes and just try to relax into that. But before I start, I always try to do my workouts. Now, I'm a big Peloton believer. Uh, my wife actually hooked me onto this not too long ago. I was always a gym rat. So I was doing, in the old days, in the 80s, I was in those uh, calisthenic classes, whatever they called those things. I did those and I did some weightlifting and I did other things. I did a lot of treadmill and biking and all, all the usual stuff. But this Peloton stuff is amazing. Uh, we've been into it for a while now and I would strongly urge you uh, to look into it. But they uh, they have yoga classes, which I take. Uh, I started out with the beginner's classes, and then I moved on into the intermediate classes. I'm not ready for advanced, but uh, believe me, intermediate's plenty. There's, there's a lot to do in order to get in shape using yoga. But it truly opens up your mind. It opens up your body. It gets you ready. It gets you fit. It gets you strong. And it's very, very liberating. So I would really urge you to build strength. You don't have to be throwing 200 pounds up off of a bench uh, or whatever, or doing 8,000 push-ups a day. Yoga will get you where you want to go, and you get the flexibility that you want to. And I'm a golfer, and frankly, I do a lot of business on the golf course, so I, I need that flexibility, particularly as I get older. Now, uh, once I complete my workout, I, you know, normal stuff, I get myself cleaned up and ready to go for the day. And I do start with the daily action plan. I don't launch into yesterday's leftovers because that's just it. It's leftover. It's yesterday's work, yesterday's energy, yesterday's project. I have to renew my projects. So I have a new list, and it's usually no more than five or seven items on that list. But to, to carry it out, you have to be in physical condition. And you have to be mentally alert and in shape, and you have to have the right mind in order to pull that off. A little water would help. Excuse me. So I find that that daily workout is a great way to energize and start your day. And then I launch into some meditation around what I got to do. Then I make my five to seven major projects, and I allocate the eight hours to those five or seven projects. Now, if I can get... A one-hour project done in 30 minutes, I've got a choice to make. I'll use those 30 minutes to do something that I want to do, or I'll use those 30 minutes to dive into the next project and end my day earlier, maybe. Or I just add two or three more items to that list because I'm ahead of schedule. But I actually schedule the work. Because if you sit there 
and you're mentally checked out and you got the list and now you're distracted scrolling through this stupid thing, you know, and then 20 minutes later you go, well, what the heck was I just thinking about? And <laughs> you know the drill. Very easy to allow social media and email inboxes and all the other distractions destroy the productivity of the day. So I break it into administrative, planning and goal setting, and customer interface. Those are the three pieces, okay? And planning and goal setting is not just an annual activity. It's actually a daily activity. Okay, so if I have a goal that I'm going to close a deal because it's at the end of the sell cycle and everything is pointing in the right direction and I've done my homework and my job, before I pick up the phone or knock on the door or go to the meeting, I know exactly how I'm going to open that call before I make it. I know exactly what I'm closing for in that call so that I know how to measure my effectiveness at the end or critique my own performance. And I also know what questions I'm going to ask in advance that are going to get things moving, that are in context for where we are in the process. You don't want to ever be out of context because that would look, obviously, that would look foolish. And I want to anticipate in advance the three or four objections that are likely to come up. And quite frankly, a good sales rep has to be nimble and you got to be prepared for just about anything. But the point is that if I have Two of those situations, two of those types of calls that are in that day, then I'm not only going to allocate time for the call, which might be a half an hour on the telephone, might be an hour face-to-face meeting, doesn't matter, but I'm also going to allocate time to prepare for it. I can't emphasize that enough. Even when in the old days, and in certain industries even today, like the copier industry, you don't just walk in the door. You go in with your imagination, your plan, and you execute your call against that particular plan. And this creates better outcomes. But to get ready for the day, to have a high-quality day, uh, to take the day when you don't want to do this job, and there are days when you get up and you just don't feel right and you got some personal problems maybe that are haunting you that day, uh, you're you're worried and fearful that, man, if I don't get a certain deal, I'm going to starve this month. Hey, I've been there. And even as a business owner with at one time up to 50 salespeople that worked for me, I felt the same way because my effectiveness and my uh, success as a business owner was tied instinctively to the productivity of my sales force. And if they were hurting, obviously I was hurting. So it takes energy, mental toughness to take the C minus day and turn it into an A plus effort, which on the worst of days, you can literally eke out a high B and maybe even sneak into an A minus. The, The point is that your mind controls your actions and your attitude and what energy you can bring is going to ebb and flow. These are, these are machines. And uh, these machines don't always work as well as we would like them to. But the one machine that I think can really work in our advantage or disadvantage is the toughness of our mind. And mental toughness, of course, is the fourth secret that I've told you about. Now, I'm not trying to, you know, I'm not a doctor and I'm not a cardiologist and I'm not a, a certainly a gym rat that's an expert and I don't teach yoga. I, I'm not any of those things. I'm a businessman. And a salesman at heart, always have been. But I do know this, that to be effective, to be what I call a breakaway sales performer, you had to put the whole thing together. Great sales skills, if you're 50 pounds overweight and have no energy, are going to go to waste. Uh, if, and I'm not judging here. I'm just, I'm just being honest. Okay. And there were times when when I let the, the um, exercise go and I, I didn't prepare myself for the day, and I can tell you that those bad habits become permanent and the quality of your life, the quality of your productivity, and the quality of the outcomes from your goals are dramatically in a, affected in a negative way. 
So if you want to get to the next level, you got to get your mind right. You got to get your body fit. You got to get a, a solid attitude in place that believes in yourself. Um, discard all the chatter and talk out there that says you're not good enough. You're not smart enough. You're not as, uh, as solid as you need to be to be effective. That's a lie. And so, but I want you to replace that with the positive energy that you are good enough. And that becomes a habit. It's a habit. You've, it's like getting up in the morning and brushing your teeth. Get up in the morning and start your day with some quiet meditation. Go right into your exercise routine. Then think about the four or five or six or seven key milestones that have to be achieved in that day. Document those. Bake them into that daily calendar that moves you closer and closer to your goals, whether they're financial goals, educational goals, whatever goals it might be that, that you're setting for yourself. But um, that's the way I start the day. And quite frankly, um, take breaks. Take breaks. There are times when your shoulders ache and your, your neck is killing you and your hands are stiff and you feel cold because there's too much air conditioning perhaps beating down on you. Be aware. Be or stay aware, stay in the moment, stay present so that you can give yourself what you need in order to be happier and to be more effective during the course of your day. And when bad news comes, just know this, it's usually, usually temporary. That doesn't mean bad things can happen. They happen all the time. It doesn't mean you couldn't get hit with a serious illness. I, I get it. And we're living right in the midst of COVID-19. I don't get up every morning hoping and praying that I I stay that I, that I avoid getting it. Of course, I want to avoid getting it, but I might. And, I, and there's probably nothing I can ultimately do about that, other than do the things that I know are being responsible for myself and others. So I don't have control over everything. Obviously, either do you. But we have control over our minds. We have control over our thoughts. We have control over our actions. And if you want to get to the next level, you've got to figure out how to be really effective with that. And what happens is it creates momentum and it creates courage. It gives you that extra something that you need in order to go out and make the toughest call in the world, to overcome the toughest objection, to not take no for an answer, to stand up for what you really believe about your company, your products, your services, or your situation. That takes energy, folks. And so start your day taking care of you. Don't grab the coffee and go to the PC. Don't grab the coffee and go to that phone. Put those down. Get your engine ready. And then go into the day with a great plan. And I guarantee you, you're going to have excellent results most of the time. And when tough t things come along, you're going to have what it takes to overcome it, and you'll get through it. Now. That's how I do it. So it works most of the time. Um, but there are those tough days where I just can't even get out of bed in the morning. I mean, you know what those are. So sometimes, not all the time, I will actually surrender to the toughest of tough days and just say, hey, it's just not there today. I'm not going to take on the most difficult challenges when I'm feeling the way I do, both mentally, spiritually, emotionally, and, and physically. So you've got to pay attention to that. You really do. Most of our activities as sales professionals are outside. We're thinking of the customer, the marketplace, the competition, the boss, the quota, the prospect list. We're thinking about everything outside of ourselves. And all of those things, depending on what kind of shape they're in, are creating pressure for us. These are the things that we have to manage. These are the things that will, um, if they're managed effectively, will allow us to get to the next level. So I want you to tune inwardly, get that right, and then you can go out and make a difference in the marketplace and have a great career. Okay, thanks for listening to me, my sweaty t-shirt, and uh, I appreciate it. Now, I'll, I'll talk with you next time. We'll, we'll get into this a little bit further at another date. Signing off, Mike Harrison, Breakaway Sales. Thanks for watching, and a special thanks to our subscribers. 
Consider becoming one today and visit BreakawaySalesPro.com for much more on how you can get the career and life you want with Breakaway Sales Skills.